All right, it's a 5.30 Friday night. Uh, we're going to burn a midnight oil tonight. we got a lot to get to, and we're running out of time. The uh, Phase 3 is opening up this uh, next couple of weeks, so we've got to uh, we've got to get through this, and then we've got to continue practicing. All right, so um, developing the framework for a family component. Um, we've talked about using dimensions to control uh, geometric parameters, uh, but now we're going to we're going to just reiterate uh, differences between type and instance parameters, right? Um, in this particular instance, uh, you see that there are parameters associated with this um, curtain wall door, right? Curtain wall single uh, glass I have open here. You can see that there are parameters associated with it. Now, notice how the parameters uh, are broken down into categories or sections. And then they have their values, and they have a formula, in some cases, associated with it, and whether or not they're locked. Now, before I go off on a tangent, let's remember that um, the key difference between type and instance parameters is that modifying a type parameter always modifies all instances of the type. Think of a type as a set of identical elements. Change one item in the set, and all the other items of that type in the model change to match. Door sizes are a good example of this. Doors come in standard sizes, 32 inches, 34, 36. On the other hand, an instance parameter modifies only the instances that you have selected. A good use of an instance parameter would be the fire rating on a door. Not every... Uh, not every 36 inch door will be fire rated, so you will need to individually identify which ones are. All right, so that, that being said, um, again, we're looking at the parameters of a door family and, and how they're sorted. And it goes into sorting parameters. Complex families can now have many parameters that control geometry, information, materials, and so on. To make it easier for your team to find parameters efficiently, you can sort them in any way that you deem appropriate for use. When the family types dialog box is open in the family editor, use the move up or move down buttons to organize your parameters. When the family is loaded into a project, the sorting order will be seen in the properties palette in the type properties dialog box. Well, um, well there is the, um, the type properties for this, uh, this door. Now, if you see curtain wall, single door. Now, if we were to go up to its uh, family types, it allows you to enter parameter values for existing family types, add parameters to the family, or create new types within the family. In one family, you can create multiple family types where each type represents a different size or variation within the family. Use the family types tool to specify the parameters that define the differences between family types. Well, if we were to go in here, we can create, in addition to dimensional constraint parameters, we can create any parameter we want and um, assign those parameters to a type. As of right now, this is the only type. Uh, its function is exterior. Uh, its swing angle, swing angle is 90. Its glazing is uh, glass and its door handle material is aluminum. And it has a width, a thickness, and an offset. And as you can see, it has analytical properties. But as you can see on the bottom of this dialog box, we can add a new parameter and uh, give you a of type or instance. And we can give that parameter a name, a discipline. And this has a lot to do with how it's going to view. And the different uh, view disciplines, each view has a discipline associated with a structural discipline, uh, HVC and electrical piping, blah, blah, blah. So, um, and then as you can see, the type of parameter, whether it's text, integer, number, length, area, volume, angle, slope, currency, density, time, speed, uh, a universal resource located, material, image, yes or no, multi-line text, and then a family type type of parameter. And then you see you can group it under all of these, um, these uh, group, so you can sort them. Like if you look, for example, in this dialog box that we have open, uh, the family types for this door, curtain wall, single glass RFA, family, you'll see that um, analytical properties um, have a bunch of parameters under them. And uh, if you go up here, you could start to see um, 
just how they're uh, how they're grouped. So if I was to give this a um, let's give this a uh, energy parameter. Let's give thermal resistance. Try to match one that already has one. Coefficient of heat transfer. Group parameter under energy analysis. Oops. Group parameters under analytical result, or results. As you can see, this, there's no analytical, analytical properties that's already used. I can go into, uh, let me see, let me put this one under, what would be good? I'm going to put this one under green building properties and just call this test. And hit OK. Well, as you can see, within within the family types dialog box for this door, a new para parameter, um, a new parameter um, group grouping um, header was created. And um, I can move these up and down, right? I'll just select this one. You can move the parameters around. Um, anyway, so that's how you would add a non-dimensional parameters. Because we talked about adding a, a dimensional parameter by grabbing its dimension. And you can see it's already grouped under dimensions. So this is more along those lines of adding more parameters to uh, your families. Now, um, on the other hand, each new option can create lots of new types. By default, loading a family into your project will also load all of its types. If you want to create the, uh, the potential for many types, but be selective about which types are loaded, you can use a type catalog to load only specific types. Now that's important because if I was to uh, go into a project, let's say this project here, and I was to, uh, let's go into insert, load a family, um, a good uh, instance is a structural beam. Unfortunately, I'm in an architectural template. So if I went to a structural framing, I went to steel, I went to wide flange beam, and I hit open. Uh, that's because I think I have it open. That's why. I think I have it open. Um, let me close this. Tile views, hold on, window, tab, closing active. Right, so we just have the uh, family three um, generic model opened up in the curtain wall. So the curtain wall door. So we have an existing family and a new family that we're creating opened up. And a project. So we have family three, which we're creating. We have a curtain wall door. And we have a uh, level one. Let me see if I can do it again. Insert load family. Flange beam. Uh, let's see. Uh, captain. 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 Uh, I'm having difficulties with that one. I just had it open. Okay. Let's try this again. Well, as you see, there's not many types in the type selector, but I know just from looking at this one, let me see if I can, it's already in. Let me see if I can do it from within the structural. No, something's, uh, something's uh, causing it to give us a problem. Uh, well, just hold that thought for a second, because what I really wanted to show you were the parameters um, for this particular type and then the type catalog. But before I do that, um, I wanted to get I wanted to get it loaded in so you could see the type catalog type catalog selector come up as you're uh, as you're loading the beam in place. And let me just uh, let me see if I can do that from a a new. Uh, Structural template, maybe this will do it. Let me try a whole new. Uh... This is a few. 
few shapes. The white flange is already in there. Let me see if I can reload it from the catalog. Families, structural framing, W shapes. Well, there's the uh, family W shapes. And these are all the types, but I want to load in a wide flange beam. Oh, wait a second. I know why. Because I have, I have the, uh, the catalog open. I have the catalog open in, in Excel. That's why, because I wanted to show you that next. Let me see if that'll do it. Uh, ah, there we go. Okay, so using type catalogs. This is what I tried to prepare earlier. So you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. All right, so we have, uh, we have type catalogs. As you can see, this is a, an American wide flange beam or W beam. Um, and it's an imperial unit. And you see, there are a lot of dimensions associated with uh, a simple uh, I beam. And there's really not, uh, not much uh, simple about it. And you can see its, uh, its parameters, its, its dimensions, and its, its static parameters. But let me read verbatim as to uh, what the text says is about using type catalogs. If you're creating a family that will have many different type iterations, you can consider using a type catalog instead of creating each iteration within the family editor. A type catalog is a text file that contains all the iterations of the parameters specified within a family. When you load a family into a project that has an associated type catalog, such as steel framing families, you are presented with a dialog box within which you can select one or more types. You can select multiple types by using, uh, by pressing control or shift. So we're presented with all these types. If I was to hold down control or hold down shift and select, I can select multiple types, all having different dimensions. Um, but the one I was looking at was the W27 series, 178. Um, I just wanted to hold that there because I wanted to show you something. All right, so if you ever need to load additional types from a family you have already loaded in your project, you do not have to locate the original family file. Instead, locate the family in the project process, right-click it, and then click Reload. So if I was just to load this 27 by 78 here, okay. Um, and as you can see, it has, it has dimensions that it pulled from that, uh, that catalog. And if you see BF, D, K, K2, T, F, T, W, if you notice in the ASTM, um, engineering toolbox I have up on the web, you can, you'll notice the similarities in these dimensions. Um, you'll see that there's a, a TW, a TF, there's a, all the length and the width and the uh, web thickness, uh, and the static parameters that are all programmed into this. And if you look, and we'll get to this, if you look at the, uh, the associated catalog file, that comes with this family, you'll see how, indeed, you can use catalogs instead of the family editor to create multiple types as opposed to creating uh, multiple, having one, and when you flex the geometry, uh, you'd have to flex the geometry for all of these parameters within an instance parameter of the beam if you wanted to get it to conform to the, uh, the designated uh, wide flange beam that you're inserting. And that's a lot of work. Why not be able to pick it from a catalog, right? So it's saying, though, if you, uh, if you ever need to reload a different type, you could go to, uh, let's see if I got that in here. Let's see, was it coming under beam system? No, it came in. Uh, structural framing, W shapes. Where did it come in? I know I loaded it. I know I loaded it. Let's just, uh, I don't see it. Um, hold on. Hold that thought. Let me see if I can at least, I make sure I loaded it. No, I don't 
think I loaded it. Let me try it again. Uh, I want the W27. 178, this one. Alright, so just by selecting that, well, there it is, and only the W27 178 came in. And I'm trying to see, here it is here now, it's in the family. So, it's saying if you wanted to select another type, um, instead of the uh, 27 by 178, you could reload. And if you reload, um, you'll get the type selector, type uh, catalog selector again, right? There it is, boom. So um, you can see, you get the type uh, catalog selector. And you can make this, this is just a comma delineated file. The uh, word pattern, note pattern, Excel can read. It's a comma delineated file. Uh, and you probably you get this from the manufacturer. You don't actually have to type these values in yourself. In any event, uh, let's continue. Uh, yeah, so you can just uh, find the family in the browser, project browser, right click it, and then reload. When you generate a type catalog, the easiest method is to first use the export types command from the application menu. This process will export all available parameters and any types you have established in your family to an appropriately formatted syntax. Save the TXT file in the same location as the associated RFA and with the same file name. For example, the type catalog associated with the wide flange RFA family file is named wwideflange.txt, just like the, uh, the family file. Revit will associate the two files. Open the text file with a text editor, such as Notepad or, uh, or Notepad++, or you can open the file as a comma delineated file, delimited file, in Microsoft Excel, as long as you save the file back to TXT format when you finish editing. Be sure to have the TXT file in the same folder as its family counterpart, as Revit looks for them together. Now, if I was to go to Windows Explorer, and I was to go to uh, where all those families are located, C, Program Data, Autodesk, Revit 2020, Libraries, U.S. Imperial, Shoop Structural Framing, Steel. Now, all at the bottom, you'll see Wide Flange Text. Well, there it is. It's just a comma delimited file with all the parameters for all of the sizes for all of these uh, these beams, let's find the one twenty. Let's find the twenty-seven by uh, one seventy-eight. Well, there's the W twenty. There's the W twenty-seven by one seventy-eight, comma, and then all of its uh, parameters are built in numer numerically. If you look at the top, you'll see they're separated by commas. So the first row of the type catalog will be a header that establishes the purpose for each column in the table. The syntax for the header is as follows. Parameter name, hashtag, hashtag, parameter type, hashtag, hashtag, parameter units. Now, there's a, a table here that lists entries for parameter type with proper method for declaring them in the type catalog header. Header For measurement parameters, such as length and area, the units can be adapted accordingly, where the parameter declaration is listed as parameter name. You will see, you will substitute a user-defined parameter name. Otherwise, the parameter name is built into the family and cannot be changed. So, um, types of parameters supported in the type catalog you got angle, area, assembly code, cost, currency, description, integer, keynote, length, manufacturer, material, model, number, slope, text, URL, volume, yes, no, or family type. Um, and, and we're going to get more into this because we're going to be creating a lot of this. Uh, for yes, no parameters in the types catalog, 
the value is defined as one, uh, defined as one equals yes, and zero equals no. So the family type parameter enters the complete name of the family with the type designation as family name type name without the file extension. The first column in the table is where you will list the types within the family. In the first row of the table, the first value is blank. That is, the first row will begin with a comma delimited delimiter when the saves as a TXT file. After the header row is filled with parameter declarations and a list of type names is entered in the first column, you can start populating the values in the rest of the catalog. Now, um, yeah, so basically, if I was to go into Excel, let's see if I can show you. Let's go into Excel. I was open white flange. Let me just finish that. Well, in order to create this, you would have, you see, these are all separated by a comma. Let me get these out here. So if I select the first one, you sure it's not, it's just overlapping, okay. So now each, these will all be, this would be your first column. This would be your second column. This would be your third column. This would be your fourth column. Fifth. Sixth and seventh column. So, as you can see, you would have uh, this would be when you, when you create a new Excel file, this would be blank. Your size would be here, your W44 by 35, and then each one of these parameter values would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It would be in the column. So, it would have its own column. And then Revit would read that when you loaded the family and give it the option of selecting the type uh, as opposed to bringing in all the types because what it said was that Revit, when you insert a family, um, unless you select it, uh, will bring in all the types unless there's a catalog associated with it, right? So um, it's a little ambiguous, um, but anyone who's used comma del uh, delimited files, used Excel, um, knows a little bit about that. Now. If you go through all the trouble of creating all of these different types, um, which I'm going to do a little bit of, we'll do, a, we'll do an example. If I'm in Revit and I have this wide flange beam, let's say I was to, uh, uh, let's see here. If I was to go to File, I was to go to New, I was to go to, actually I could probably do it with the wide flange beam. Let me see if I can do it. Let me open up the wide flange beam again. Let's see if I can do it here. Uh, U.S. Imperial. Where am I? Stiffeners, framing, steel. Let me go down to the wide flange beam again. Let me open up that family itself. Okay. So now, if I was to go to uh, family category and parameters, we can see, um, we can create some, uh, we can change its category. But now here, here are all, here's the type for the 12 by 16. Now, not all of the types are listed here, okay? Not all of the types, because if you, uh, if you look here, um, you can create additional types and when you create the additional types, you can export, you can export file, export, family types, export family types in the current family to a T, uh, TXT file. So if I was to select that, we'll get this dialog box. I don't want to do it again uh, because we, uh, well, I could do it again and just put it up here on the, uh, on the desktop. So now I just exported it, and if I go to steel and I go to uh, desktop, 
and I take a look at wide flange tax, double click on it, we can see the only type that was in that one was the W1226. Um, and that's because that was the only type that was, uh, was selected. Um, the family, when the family was created as a 12 by 26, and then types were created, and types were created into a catalog, as opposed to you were exported out of the family into catalogs, and then instead of the Revit software um, reading the type from the individual element, it references in the catalog and allows you to select what type. Uh, so it doesn't um, slow down the uh, the model, right? If you don't need all those types, then there's no reason to select them. All right, so that's the general go around with the catalog, and, and that's going to be helpful. And, and it's one of those uh, certification objectives, and it's a Kobe compliance issue. Um, all of that's going to play into it. Um, so I, I just wanted to stop on that one because we're going to be getting into organizing solids and lines, going a little, uh, a little further ahead with this, and then using object styles and subcategories. So let me, um, let me just stop this here, and we'll continue with developing the framework for a family component further on down the line. So try to stay focused. We have, we have some time. Hopefully we can get through most of this. If not, um, we'll have to take a hiatus and we'll get back to it. But there's so much we have to do um, in order to, to, to get this on paper and, and get a general understanding of the fundamentals that are involved. And if you can get these under your belt uh, and you can uh, you just start now, I'm telling you, it's a, it's a, it's a well worthwhile cause because, again, the industry demands it. The industry demands this.